Hello, today we're going to talk about triathlon bikes, Argon 18's E119 Tri Plus. Now for 2016, Argon launched its uh, new breed of totally redesigned triathlon bikes. The E119 Plus and its twin sister, the E119, are at the top of Argon's triathlon food chain. Uh, I've been riding Argon bikes for quite some time now. My previous triathlon bike was an Argon E114. And that was a fantastic bike. I love that bike. So when time came for me to upgrade my ride, I started looking at options, alternatives, different brands, different setups in the market, each with its own pros and cons. And at the end, I decided to go for another Argon, the E119. The bike, the bike is gorgeous. The design is, is clean and efficient. And by looking at it, you can really tell the guys from Argon up in Canada, spend a good chunk of time addressing some of the major pain points on high-performance triathlon bikes. So let's talk about uh, the setup. Uh, the bike came stuck with uh, Shimano Ultegra Di2, the electronic uh, drivetrain, and the stock wheels from uh, Vision, the Vision Team Teddy. I went with the cheapest option they had for wheels, just because on one hand I had my own racing wheels, and uh, on the other hand, I really needed to keep the price of the bike as low as possible so I didn't have to sell my soul to, to the devil to buy it. Mm. From that stock, I changed uh, the saddle. I replaced it with my beloved Adamol Racing Saddle. Then that uh, saddle and I, we go back a long time and we have a very close relationship, if you know what I mean. And I also replaced the front hydration system. I replaced it with a profile design uh, water bottle with, uh, for reasons that I will explain later, it works better for me. Um, so with that said, let's uh, take a look at the bike in more detail. Let's take a look at the brakes. The brakes on the Argon 18 E119 uh, are one of the most fascinating things on this bike. Um, if you are familiar with uh, triathlon bikes and their brakes, you know the pain they are for the designers. They don't know what to do with them. Uh, for the mechanics, it is a major nightmare to maintain and to replace. And for users, uh, adjust them or maintain them is also a big pain. Um, so Argon 18 spent quite some time and effort on redesigning both the front and rear brake, so they go in line with the bike and they solve a lot of the issues that they have on other bikes. Um, this is the rear brake, and as you can see, Argon 18 decided to go with horizontal calipers on the top tube. By doing that, they maintain the brake uh, in a position that is very easy to access for maintenance and for uh, setup and for cleaning, and they also help with the uh, bike's aerodynamics. If you're a an user, if you're riding and your brakes are uh, brake pads are rubbing, uh, the only thing you need to do is slide a Allen key through this little hole here. There is one on each side, and you can adjust uh, the spacing on your brake pads. And if you want to do maintenance on the bike, or if you want to clean it, you just remove a couple of screws that I I previously removed, and um, then you just snap this plastic part off. Um, and then you have full access to your brake caliper. Now, let's uh, look at this brake. Uh, I haven't cleaned this bike in over, uh, I think, probably a couple of months. Shame on me. But even after a couple of months of riding, look at the brakes. They're very clean. There is just a little bit of dust on it. And no mud, no residues, nothing from the road. And if you need to adjust them, they're very easy to access here. Uh, it's a very simple, very ingenious way to brake, and the brakes are very linear. They give you very good feedback, and they react very well. Um, if you need to adjust them, do more adjust than brake pads. They're very, it's very easy to do. And once you're once you're done, you just go back and snap the cover uh, back on it and screw it. Uh, again, it is very easy to do it. The front brakes are also behind a plastic cup. And uh, this is to maintain the aerodynamic lines of the bike, the flow of the air, 
uh, is not disturbed by the calipers. And it also helps keep the calipers away from the environment, from the dots, water, mud, whatever it may come from the road. Um, similar to the rear brakes, if you need, if you feel the need for adjusting the brake pads while you're on the road, you don't need to take the cover off. You can access the brake pads through this little hole and adjust them either in or out, in or out and um, be on the go. Now, for if you want to have access to the calipers for maintenance or for cleaning, the only thing you need to do is remove a couple of bolts, one on each side, and then uh, take off the plastic cover. And here are the calipers. I think it's, it's, it's a very simple design. It is very well made. Uh, it keeps everything clean. There are no cables. There are no additional pieces messing with your bike. Uh, and uh, it is very easy to maintain and very easy to operate. Uh, of course, uh, the, there's nothing good comes out of brakes that are well designed, but they don't break well. Uh, and I can tell you, these brakes work perfectly. They are very linear. They give you very good feedback. Uh, they're very responsive and powerful. So if there is one feature to highlight from this bike is both the front and rear brakes. One of the add-ons of buying the Argon E119 Tri Plus versus its uh, twin sister, the Argon E119, is that with the Plus version of the bike, you get all the storage systems that have been designed for this bike and also the hydration systems that come with it. If you have had to buy a triathlon bike in the past, you probably know how expensive it can be to go and start buying aftermarket parts for both the storage and hydration you can easily spend over $300 on buying those parts. And don't even get me started with it because yeah, it is. I always have said that that is way too expensive. Um, so with the Argon uh, 18, uh, the 119 Plus version, you get all your needs met. Let's take a look at the rear system first. Uh, and I call it a system because Argon has designed all these parts to work together. It includes a cargo box, a uh, the bottle cages, one on each side, and um, the seat post. One of the reasons why I purchased the Argon 18 is because of its adjustability. Uh, I must say I have a very weird body shape. My legs are shorter, but my torso is long, or maybe the other way, I don't remember. But uh, it is very important for me that the bike can be adjusted to fit my weird body shape. Um, the seat post of the Argon 18 has a rail on top that allows you, I don't know, maybe four inches of movement uh, back and forth for your saddle. And it also a clamp that allows you to tilt your saddle up and down. Uh, that is very important if you, like me, have, a, again, very strange leg length. Um, also part of the system is the, is the rear storage and hydration uh, uh, parts. Um, the bottle cages, um, that is, if in this setup you have one on each side, and I must say this this storage system it works very well. The bottle cages are great. Uh, in the past, I used to have problems with my bottles being ejected every time I hit a pothole, uh, so I have to put uh, rubber uh, bands and some other things to make to make sure that I keep the bottles in their place. Uh, but with these cages, um, I don't have to do anything. They ju bottles just stay there no matter what. So they are very well designed. Um, and also with the system, it comes the um, cargo box. Now, I know this is very polarizing. I have heard all kind of jokes from my friend every time I have, I have it on. Uh, but I actually grew up to love it. I love the cargo box in the back. Um, uh, and one thing that I tell my friends is that, you know what? I used to carry saggy sandwiches for my meal on the road. Now I can carry all the, pa all the ingredients with me and have a fresh sandwich every time I need one. So <laughs> it is, um, again, it is big. It, it adds a little bit of weight. But to me, it's actually a great uh, cargo box. You can put all kind of stuff in it. Um, and one of the things that... I got from talking with the guys from Argon is that the, the, the box has been, has been designed to help you with your aerodynamics in the back of the bike. Um, 
And that is another important thing because a lot of emphasis goes in the front end of the bike, on the leading edge, edge of the bike, when you try to keep your leading edge as small as possible. But not many bikes address the problems in the back and the drag that you generate on your back, it can be as dramatic as the one you generate in the front. So the cargo box allows for a very good airflow on the back and eliminates a lot of the drag you get from it. Now, you can look it from the back and it, you can say, you can look, it, it looks huge, it's a big box. Um, but look how well it covers the bottles. And if you, if you had a bottle on the other place, on the other side, it would be the same. But the flow of the air doesn't get entangled in the bottles, it just keeps flowing on the cargo box and, and back. So um, I think it's, it's, um, it's an interesting design, uh, uh, not many people like it, and again, I hear a lot of jokes from, from my friends, but I do love the cargo box in the back and the bottle cages. I think they have been, um, they actually hit the mark. Now, if you don't like the storage box, or you are gonna go on a ride that you really don't need to carry much stuff, um, the rear system is very flexible. And I found that to be a great feature of, of this part. Um, the cargo box, you can easily remove it by just snapping it off of the, um, of the bracket, I guess. And then you are left with uh, just the bottle cages. And if you want to, let me just switch places here. But instead, if instead of carrying one, two bottle cages, you just want to carry one on your back, you can very easily just remove the two cages and just put one on the back. You can do all those things uh, with the system. So you can carry two, two bottles, one bottle, one bottle with a box, whatever configuration you think it, it matches your needs. The Vento box, or I think Argon calls it the cookie jar, um, was also designed by Argon specifically for the Argon uh, 119. Uh, and as you can see, it integrates perfectly with the frame uh, and it maintains the line that it comes from the headset cover over the Bento box. So it doesn't create any turbulence. Um, and inside, uh, if we take a look inside, uh, there is plenty of room here for you to carry your, your stuff. Uh, I think I have put here three gels and a couple of salt sticks and I still have room for more. So it is pretty roomy and it's very well integrated. Um, if you want to remove it, you can remove it with a couple of screws if you don't need to carry it. So it's very easy to take it off the bike as well. Um, now let's talk about the, uh, this bike's uh, cockpit. And this is another reason why I decided to purchase the uh, E119 Tri Plus uh, bike. Um, it is because of its adjustability on the cockpit. Um, when you have to make a good fit for your bike, you need to be able to play with a lot of things. Uh, and many uh, high-end bike manufacturers address some but not all of those uh, things that you need to be able to adjust. And, and I think our Argon 18 did a great job with this cockpit. Um, it, it, it brought some things from previous designs and it added some new ones, which I think made the, make uh, this a great cockpit. Um, one of the things that you, you can do with a bike is you can adjust your bars and pads uh, angle very easily. Let me just do a quick close up here and on the handlebar at the bottom of your bars and your elbow pads, you have a graded scale that you can use to adjust the angle, the inclination of your bars and, and pads. Um, some bikes are very rigid with this case, or in some other bikes, you, you might be able to adjust your pads, but not your bars. Uh, there are many thousand different designs out there that, that do some things, but not all of them. The other great thing about the cockpit is that um, it separates the bars and the elbow pads from the actual handlebar. Um, I've seen in some high-end bikes that the bars and the handlebar are just one single piece. You cannot move them up or down. And I think that is a very bad design. You need to be able to move your hands from the aero position 
to the climbing position or to, you, to the standing position without having to move your upper body too much. And by adjusting your uh, bar's uh, height versus the handlebar height, you can accomplish that. It is very fairly common on uh, time trial on time trailers for you to see very low handlebars with very high bars. It is a way for them to remain on as aero as possible during the whole ride. Um, the other thing that I think uh, are going to address very well is uh, the easiness of putting it together and breaking it apart. Um, and this is because sometimes you need to travel with your bike. And a lot of high-end bikes come with a cockpit so complex that you need to be either a rocket science to uh, break it apart and put it together, or you need to bring your own rocket science with you to the race for the bike to be put together. Um, Argon 18 did a great job on this. Breaking it apart is very simple. This is just a cover. This is just a cap they put for uh, to cover the head uh, of the frame. And the only thing you need to do is undo those uh, three screws. And then you can take the handlebar off and pack your bike. It is very easy. Uh, now for the, one of the things that I really don't like about um, this bike is that the control box for the Shimano system, and let me see if I can pull it out all the way, but the control system for your Shimano Di2 uh, drivetrain is hidden inside the headset. And it is a good position, but there is no way you can get to it unless you take this little uh, piece of uh, plastic off. And it comes with three screws. So again, it's not easy. If you need to adjust the your derailers, you can on the way you cannot do it. Now, uh, it is it is very hard because to be fairly to be fair with Argon 18 and with some other manufacturers, uh, Shimano did a poor job on designing those boxes because in every bike you look at with a Shimano Di2, it is either hidden in a way that you cannot reach it or it's hanging or attached in some weird place. So it's not an easy box to hide. So I particularly, I like, I like the fact that it's hidden. Um, I just find it a pain that I need to break it apart every time I need to charge it or adjust my shifters. It doesn't happen very often, but uh, you have to do it. So, as close to perfection as I think the E119 Tri Plus cockpit is, there are a couple of things that I really don't like. Uh, actually, I grew up to hate to the point that I replaced them. And one of them is the Torhands uh, bottle system that it comes with it. Um, I couldn't make it work. I don't know if it was for me or it was just the way that my feet works with the bike, but um, I had tons of issues with it. And I'm a recursive guy. I can do a lot of things with it and I can play with things and see if I can make them better. But um, I really try every, every possible trick with this bottle and I couldn't make it work. So I'm making a separate review for it. Um, but eventually I gave up and I took this thing off and it is on my uh, spare parts bin now. Um, the other thing um, that I didn't like and I was quite disappointed with was the elbow pads. And um, in all honesty, I cannot understand why Argon uh, putting together an $8,000 bike or $12,000 bike if you, want, if you go with the top end bike, um, why will make such a bad elbow pads? Now, I don't longer have them because it is a very sad story. The original ones, they started falling apart um, and they started coming off. The little felt on top fell off, they started peeling off, they started peeling from the plastic supports. Um, so I had a lot of problems with it. To the point that while I was driving to Ironman, Florida, uh, a few months back, while driving there, they flew off the bike. So I got to uh, Florida and I got off my car and I want to get on my bike and no elbow pads. So I had to run around and try to find some replacement 
and I eventually found someone that had some the, a couple of uh, these CGs and I put them on and they work well. Now, I spoke uh, with the Argon rep a couple of times about it. They told me that uh, he told me that they are on order and that they're trying to get him. And it has been a few weeks, so I'm actually a bit, bit disappointed by the fact that, again, you spend all this money on a bike and you get uh, some crappy uh, elbow pads. I think Argon can do uh, way better on that, as well on, uh, on, the, on the water bottle. But the CGs were great. Um, I still want to put the original pads on it because they are a little bit uh, narrower. So as soon as I get them from Argon, I'll put them back on. Now let's go back to the good stuff. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, uh, I think this is an amazing bike. I think the guys from Argon did a great job in putting this bike together and solving many of the issues that you see with high-end bikes on the market today. And they did a genius work with it on solving those issues. Um, and there are a couple of things uh, that I uh, want to also mention on this video. One of the, one if the, is the wheels and the bike's integration with these wheels. No bike is completely designed until it's well integrated with the wheel systems. Um, on my bike, uh, my racing wheels are MV, MV 7.8 wheels, which is I think stands for 70 millimeters on the front, 80 millimeters on the back. Um, with wide rims on 25 millimeter tires. Um, this frame has been specifically designed to work with 25 millimeter uh, wheels, uh, which I think is great. I love 25 millimeter wheels. They make the ride so much smoother uh, compared to 23s and 21s that I will, if I can, I will never go back to 23s. Um, but it still works with 23s. Uh, while you have enough room on the front uh, and the back houses, uh, wheel houses for both tires, you can still ride uh, on, on 23 millimeters. In fact, for uh, at least one race uh, this past year, I used my Ren disc, which is a, uses a 23 millimeter um, uh, wide tire. So the bike can use both, but it has been designed to work with 25 millimeters. Um, and I think that is all that also contributes to the greatness of this bike. Um, the other thing that I found uh, good on this bike, actually great, is the fact that it uses uh, a standard uh, derailleur hangers. So you don't have to deal with uh, that other system that you need to use that is really similar to the, to the track. Uh, bikes. Um, this one is just a standard derailleur hangers and you can pull your wheel like you do on your road bike. It's a matter of seconds you get your wheel in and out and you don't have to mess with brakes or anything. So I think that it is peace of mind but it all, uh, when, while you are racing and it also um, makes the bike simpler. I like simple designs and I think that's one of the things that uh, Argon excels at is that they have been able to find very simple, smart solutions to problems that other bikes have or to problems that have been solved by adding more complexity to the bikes. So again, if you are in the market for, uh, for a triathlon bike, you should definitely consider Argon 18. I think that it's a great company. They make great bikes. Um, I believe they just signed with Astana for next year's Pro Tour. So we should see more of Argon uh, in 2017 on the races around the world, which is a great thing. Uh, and again, thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, please shoot me an email.